good morning students and welcome back to the social science class okay now today we will start with the revision of geography and you people have le uh, learned about this chapter in your previous class 6 but we will revise in class 7th also because an important thing you have to be have uh, to learn and for the better understanding you should have known about these points or these concepts so today i will tell you about the globe about latitudes and longitudes okay a very important concept for understanding geography okay so i will tell you about uh, what is a globe so everybody has might have seen a globe i will see show you what is a globe everybody has seen this a globe okay so what is a globe a globe in is a world map pasted on printed over the surface of a hollow sphere and molded in on an axis or a needle that help us to rotate it freely so with this globe there is an axis so with this axis i can rotate it with the help and this help us and help me for the better understanding of a map or you can say for the better understanding of our planet earth we can because we can see the correct shape of various continents and the countries on a globe on a globe i can see the correct shape of the continents and countries so what are the various advantages of what are the various advantages of globe i will tell you the advantages of globe okay first advantage of globe is globe is very useful for teaching and for learning geography okay with the help of the globe i can better teach you about the geography because with the help of a globe i can tell you the correct position of a place second the relationship between the earth and the sun i can tell you i can rotate it i can tell you the correct place whether there is sun whether there is a day whether there is a night okay with this i can tell you the correct distance the correct directions with this with help of a globe various countries and continents various countries and continents this is a ocean over there this is a continent over there india is there then comes africa so all these things can be rep better representative in a globe rather than on a map so i have a better advantages of teaching you with the help of a globe okay and what are the various limitations of the globe the main limitations because of its size its size is so big for me it is not so easy for me to carry the globe to the class every day or it is difficult for you people also to carry daily to the class because of its bulky size understood and it is although its size is small but it is not easy because of its shapes and size also only the half part of the globe can be seen at one time only the half part i can see africa over there i cannot see the continent which is opposite there so at one point of time i can see only one part of the earth i cannot see the another part of the earth i can only see only one part of the earth at a time i can see only one part of the earth if i rotate it i can see another part of the earth but at a time i can only see only one part of the earth okay globe is not suitable for representing the whole world at one time it is we can study it the uh, with the help of a globe i can understand i can make you understand only only a part of the earth not the full earth okay and small towns villages roads railways etc i cannot show you on the globe i cannot show you small villages small roads small railways all these things cannot be represented on a globe okay this can be shown with the help of a map but not with the help of a globe okay so today the next part i will tell you about latitudes and longitudes okay
okay so important latitudes so today we will tell you about important latitude so everybody knows what is a latitude latitude are parallel lines can you see this latitude over there so these are parallel lines okay can you see the equator over there can you see tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn uh, arctic circle antarctic circle so these are important latitudes okay so these latitudes are important imaginary lines on the on the earth and the longest latitude is equator can you see the equator over there or the zero degree so this is the longest latitude equator is defined as an imaginary circle which is drawn around the globe exactly halfway between the two poles so equator divides our earth equally into two equal half the north pole or you can say the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere so zero degree latitude is there and this zero degree latitude which can be represented like this can you see this so this is a zero degree latitude so zero, zero degree latitude above the equator towards the north pole this is the northern hemisphere and from the zero degree to the south pole this is the southern hemisphere what is this is called as this is called as the southern hemisphere so latitude zero degree or the equator is the longest latitude and it divides the earth into two equal half okay it divides the earth into two equal half okay the next is that this north of the equator is called as the northern hemisphere from the equator towards the north pole it is called as the northern hemisphere and from the equator towards the south pole is the southern hemisphere okay what it is called as southern hemisphere so important facts about latitude so imaginary lines or circles running parallel to the equator are called as latitude so this is the equator and this is tropic of cancer 23 and a half degree then comes the arctic circle 66 and a half degree north so these are all parallels or latitudes okay then the parallels or latitudes are measured in degrees. Can you see the zero degree over there? Okay. Can you see the zero degree? This is zero degree. This is 23 and a half degree north. This is 66 and a half degree north. So these are measured in degrees. Okay. These are measured in degrees. Okay. So equator represents zero degree. Can you see this? Zero degree. Equator can be represented at zero degree. Okay. All parallel lines of north of the equator is called as the northern latitudes. From the equator towards the north pole, all the latitudes are called as northern latitude. And from the zero degree to the south is called as the southern latitude, like Tropic of Capricorn or the Antarctic Circle. Okay, these are called as the southern latitudes. North and so south is written and represented as in form of N and S. Can you see this? 90 degree north, N, 90 degree south, S. So this is represented as north and south. It's represented as north and south. Okay. So there are 90 parallels in the northern hemisphere. How many parallels are there? There are 90 parallels in the northern hemisphere and there are 90 parallels in the southern hemisphere. Okay. So there are 90 parallels in the northern hemisphere and 90 parallels in the southern hemisphere. Hemisphere. So these are important latitude. Then I will tell you about important latitudes of the earth. So first we will study about equator. Can you see everybody? Equator is there. Equator is the imaginary line on the earth's surface which is equidistant from the north and the south pole. Equator is at the center. It is equidistant from the north pole also. It is equidistant at the south pole also. So it divides the earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. Okay, can you see everybody equator over there? Second comes tropic of cancer. Can you see everybody tropic of cancer? Tropic of cancer is 23 and a half degree north. Okay, tropic of cancer is important latitude in the northern hemisphere and it is located at the angular distance of 23 and a half degree north. Okay, it is situated at 23 and a half degree north. Okay. And then comes the Tropic of Capricorn. The Tropic of Capricorn is the southern latitude or you can say the lies in the southern hemisphere. And what is this? 
It is important parallel in the southern hemisphere and it is located at the angular distance of 23 and a half degrees south. So it is located in the southern hemisphere and it is called as the Tropic of Capricorn. Okay. <coughs> then comes the Arctic Circle. Can you see in the north the Arctic Circle? This is Arctic Circle lies in the angular distance of 66 and a half degree north. Okay. This lies at the northern hemisphere and what is the angular distance? 66 and a half degree north. Okay. Then Antarctic Circle. Can you see this Antarctic Circle? 66 and a half, uh, half degree south. The Antarctic Circle lies in the angular distance of 66 and a half degree south of the equator. It lies at the 66 and a half degree south of the equator. So these are the important latitudes of our Earth. These are the important latitudes of our Earth. Okay. So next is, I'll tell you about the various heat zones. Okay. I'll tell you about the various heat zones. Okay, the various heat zones are there. Okay, the earth is divided into three important heat zones. The three important heat zones are, they are the torrid zone. Can you see everybody the torrid zone? Then we come to the temperate zone, the orange part. And then come to the frigid zone, that is the blue part. Okay, so three important zones we will study today. So these are also termed as heat zones. What are these called as? These are called as heat zones. So first is torrid zone. Can everybody see the torrid zone? The torrid zone lies between the equator to 23 and a half degree north to 23 and a half degree south. The light yellow color. Okay. This light yellow color represents the torrid zone around the equator. The torrid zone lies between the Tropic of Cancer. Can you see the Tropic of Cancer? The dotted lines and the Tropic of Capricorn. What is a Capricorn? Tropic of Capricorn, the dotted line. So the place which lies in the torrid zone between 23 and a half degree north to 23 and a half degree south. Okay, these areas, the light yellow color is called as torrid zone. Okay, so the sun rays falls vertically here all around the year. The sun rays are vertically, means very straight. Where they are not slanting, they are straight, they fall upon the these zones or these areas. Okay. Next, next it, it is we receive the maximum heat and it is the hottest zone of the earth. So it is the hottest zone of the earth. Okay. Equator runs parallel and uh, through it in the middle of the zone. Okay. It runs. Charging. Hmm. So, it, it runs, uh, it runs at the, uh, you can say there is a, um, the zero degree latitude is there and in this zero degree latitude, this have the, or the sun rays falls directly on this, okay. The sun rays falls directly on this and there are, you can say, this is the hottest zone. This is the hottest zone and sun rays falls directly on this zone. Okay. Then, and the mid uh, midday, the sun is exactly overhead and at least once the year in this zone. So, sun rays is directly or it is falls directly on this torrid zone. Then comes the temperate zone. Can you see the orange part of it? So, this is called as the temperate zone. Okay. The temperate zone, the north temperate zone and the south temperate zone. The zone outside the torrid zone between the 23 and a half degree north to 66 and a half degree north and in the southern hemisphere 23 and a half degree south to 66 and a half degree south is received slanting rays. This orange area receives slanting rays. They are not, uh, the rays are not uh, straight. They are slanting. Okay. The sun rays are slanting, they are not direct and they are not so hot and not so cold. And there is a moderate temperature, it is not so hot 
and not so cold in this torrid zone or this uh, temperate zone. The, the belt between the Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle is called as the Northern Temperate Zone. Can you see the North Temperate Zone? In the Northern Hemisphere, it is the North Temperate Zone. And the belt between the Tropic of Capricorn and the top Antarctic Circle, this is called a Southern Temperate Zone. Can you see the Southern Temperate Zone? So, the one part of the orange part, which is North, is called as the Northern Temperate Zone. And the southern part of the orange uh, orange part is called as the southern temperate zone and it is moderate temperature it is not so hot and not so cold okay then last we come to the north frigid zone okay this is the north frigid zone what is the north frigid zone the frigid zone between 66 and a half degree north to the north pole can you see the black, uh, blue portion in the north this blue portion in the north from 66 and a half degree north to the north pole is called as the north frigid zone okay and from this 66 and a half degree south to the south pole is called as the southern frigid zone and it receives very very less heat it is freezing it is free frozen throughout the year and it is the coldest zone okay that is why it is the coldest zone because the sun rays are very very less in these areas the north frigid zone lies between the Arctic Circle in the, and the North Pole and the southern frigid zone lies between the Antarctic Circle to the South Pole and the sun rays are very very less in these important areas or you can say it is frozen throughout the year. It is very very cold throughout the year because these frigid zones are frozen throughout the year. Okay, I repeat there are three heat zones. The first is, the first is called as the torrid zone between 0 degree to 23 and a half degree north to 23 and a half degree south. This yellow portion is called as the torrid zone and the sun rays are directly on this torrid zone. Then we come to 23 and a half degree north to 66 and a half degree north is called as the north temperate zone. The sun rays is slighter or it is slanting to 23 and a half degree south to 66 and a half degree south. This is called a south temperate zone. The south temperate zone also receives moderate or less amount of sun rays. Then we come to the third, is called as a frigid zone. The frigid zone means that it lies between 66 and a half degree north to the north pole and 66 and a half degree south to the south pole. So it is the coldest zone and it has very very less amount of heat of the sun so this finishes with the class of today tomorrow i will start with longitude okay children so okay children so this is all about for today's class tomorrow we will start about the important longitude Okay, and how we will measure about the time, how we will locate about a particular place in the next class. Take care, stay safe.